want to hear uh, an interesting story <laughs> about something that happened in the kitchen. <laughs> So, <laughs> so uh, a while ago, like two, <laughs> no, <laughs> so like like two ish weeks ago, I had a bunch of blueberries that were like kind of about to go bad. Like they were getting wrinkly. They didn't look very good, you know. So I was like, okay, I have to. I have to use all these blueberries somehow, but I, I don't want to really, I don't want to eat them because they don't look very good anymore. So I was like, okay, well, what are some things I can make with blueberries? And I went online to check, and they were like, oh, you can make blueberry syrup with just blueberries, water, and sugar. I'm like, perfect. I have all those ingredients. I won't mess this up. And I didn't. I made. <laughs> and see the bowl, and the, it was fine, and it's great. But the issue is that when I made the blueberry syrup, I didn't have anything to put it on, <laughs> so I just had like a whole pot's worth of blueberry syrup, but like zero things to add it to. <laughs> oh. So like, I was like, okay, well, I'll just save this for like when I do go and buy yeah like bread or something right and then I can put the blueberry syrup on it so I stick it in my fridge and it has been a week <laughs> and like and I and I got bread I brought like I bought like mini croissants and I put like dip the croissants in the the blueberry syrup and I was like okay it's pretty good, but I can't, like, use up all of it. <laughs> Did you check it? I mean, well, last time I checked, um... <laughs> okay, well, well, okay. It's, it's fine. <laughs> but probably. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna do with... Because I need my pot back. Right now it's full of, like, cold blueberry syrup in my fridge. But I don't know what to do. Like, do I throw it- how do I even throw it out? I can't throw it in a garbage can. Plain cheesecake and slap it up there. That, the thing is, Nick, I have so much syrup. I have so much syrup. <laughs> One plain cheesecake isn't gonna make a dent in what I have. <laughs> Why did I do that to myself? <laughs> You're a coward. I know, I am. Uh, which is why I, I'm the perfect candidate to play the game. <laughs> I have to get a lot of dessert. <laughs> Alright. I have to like make a pie or something. I don't know. I don't know. I I've been putting syrup on a lot of things and it's still not done. Okay. Um so anyway. <laughs> Like, like some peanut butter jelly type shit. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Did you go wrong with peanut butter? Like straight up peanut butter? That's what I read on the internet too, that you can just add it to drinks, but like, do I, um, <laughs> bold of you to assume I have drinks other than water and alcohol. <laughs> <clears throat> 
you find it useless. <laughs> for, for Zay's 21st, it's not Zay getting drunk. It's me. <laughs> okay. Ice cream. It's like a little cold for ice cream. Which... <laughs> It may not be for you, but it is for me. <laughs> Nothing is too cold. <laughs> if only I was- if I was experiencing the California heat, then I could go out and get ice cream. <laughs> All right. Um. <laughs> so, uh, there's a game. <laughs> it's called Lydia's Labyrinth, and it's by. Uh, I never know how to say their name correctly. I just say Val, but like Val Hel Val Hel Val Helians the Helians. Um, they're the same people who made um, Travel Devil last year, which is the game about summoning. A devil <laughs> who like um hosts like a not YouTube but DoomTube show showing off sites in Paris. So this year they made um a game called Lydia's Labyrinth and it's uh about being stuck in a maze. Whoa! I'm crazy. <laughs> so <clears throat> the little blurb synopsis is um, while it's written by Lydia herself. Wow. <clears throat> Are we done with 16? <laughs> Welcome to my labyrinth, darling. Do please try not to die too quickly, will you? It is so wonderful to have your fate nestled in the palm of my hand. I do, hopes, I do so hope that you will enjoy my little game. My marvelous maze is filled to the brim with delightfully deadly tricks and traps. However, should you prove yourself worthy and find me at the end of the labyrinth, it would be my deepest pleasure to bestow upon you your final reward. Don't keep me waiting, my lovely. Um, honestly, the the little message from Lydia, like, it gives me a lot of, like, escape room vibes. <laughs> if, like, like in-person escape rooms where they're like, let me, and like your little escape room attendants, like, let me read you the lore of this room. <laughs> So, um, so choose your own adventure style visual novel. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it's like actually like point and click puzzles. It seems like it's probably mostly choices and, and less like, uh, puzzles. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yes, alright. Um, and apparently there are 29 deaths. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, just a run pay, run pay about, about. No, you gotta throw your credits in there, man. Oh. Endings. Do not click. Shit! No! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! I didn't mean to click! I didn't mean to click! I didn't mean to click! Just kidding. <clears throat> Let's just pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bad luck can't last forever. <laughs> well, I mean, you should see my gotcha pool. <laughs> okay. Hey, you should totally enter this contest I saw today for a free holiday. Here, let me sign you up. Just shut up, Siri. I'm not talking to you. How did you even? What? What did I even say? What did I even say? <laughs> Here, let me sign you up. Just listen to this. Have <laughs> you been lucky? <laughs> Um, it was 
just it was joke though. <laughs> <clears throat> Win an all expenses paid trip to a real life castle. Oh my god. Filled with hundreds of years worth of history in every stone. Uh you will be greeted by your own your very own personal driver at the airport. Wow, what luxury! And chauffeured in style to your final destination. Far away from the frantic stresses of the city. A remote, isolated mansion just off the peaceful coast. <laughs> However, you will still be fur furnished with the latest in technology and entertainment. Do we move planets? <laughs> Hold still, you. Uh. Once there, you will be escorted to luxurious accommodation. Dream house. Down you go, chum. And you can rest assured that ev that your every need will be personally overseen by the mistress of the estate. What have you got to lose? Nothing, apparently. Hi. Hello, oh, darling. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you just precious in your little jumpsuit and communication visor? What? Hush, my dearest. I can't tell I can't tell you how enraptured I am to have you visit my humble abode once more. What what is she talking about? I've never been to a hellhole like this before. Unless I have, and I forgot. Oh oops. <laughs> Getting you here was no easy feat, but only the best will do for my adoring public darling. What? And now that I have you, well, I'm almost giddy. Uh. Uh. Well, who am I? I don't. I don't know. Where am I? Well, I'm in a luxurious private estate. If the narration was to be trusted, what the fuck is going on here? Well, I'm in a luxurious private estate. Please, let me go. Well, why would I leave a luxurious private state? So by process of elimination, I've got to ask the- <laughs> Oh wait, no, this is not who am I. This, that's who- who's Lydia. But we know- Does it matter? <laughs> Where are my manners? Allow me to introduce myself. I will be your host for what is likely to be the rest of your pathetic mortal life. Oh boy, thank god. <laughs> I'm the ruler of the night, the mistress of the maze. Lydia von Mer Mercia Mer Mer <laughs> Ah <laughs> Every spooktober I struggle with names. Mer Yep, and the true heiress to the heiress to the Dracul throne. Oh, vampires, right. But enough about me, my delicious morsel. Back to the business at hand. What am I doing here? Ah, oh, my beautiful sacrifice. Allow me to illuminate you about your unfortunate predicament. I shall be your mistress of ceremony, as you, my sweetling, have been chosen to be the participant in the premier attraction of the night court. Oh. Lydia's Labyrinth! <clears throat> and then, like, you just see in the background, uh, one of those studio audiences looking up at the flashing applause sign, and they're like, Yay! <laughs> Please clap. A wonderfully cruel gala of wick wickedness, where each year we test that pathetic, clingy attachment mortals have to life, no matter how insignificant they are. And that's where you come in, my darling. You see, we always try to find a number of souls whose impact upon the world has been so profoundly minuscule that simply no one would miss them if they were plucked from existence. <laughs> but you, my succulent pet, you are so special. I have been searching for a spectacle such as yourself for a long, long time. So, you're going to be running the labyrinth all by your lonesome, so that I can give you my completely undivided attention. Okay. No, I don't get friends. Where? <laughs> The oh so charming headset that uh, the oh so charming headset you have adorned with allows me to communicate you 
I'll communicate with you no matter where you are, as well as letting my public view my public view your progress through my little emporium of conundrum. Those watching from the comfort of their devious lairs should be seeing the mortal's progress on the map on the left of your six, uh, of the less left of your screens. Our poor prey here will have no such luxury and will be will have to blindly navigate their way to the end of our maze with only their puny wits to guide them. However, if they can somehow solve our little brain teasers, they might just find some useful items or clues. A little something to add a precious sliver of hope to their escape. <laughs> We're pitchless now. <laughs> Do you think they can survive, or will they fall prey to one of our devilish traps? My fiendish friends, it's time to place your bets! So, this is... Mr. Beast. <laughs> now my delicious morsel. Never thought Mr. Beast would reincarnate as a vampire or goth girl, but hey, you know. <laughs> It's not the most impossible thing. Are you ready to play? What's in it for me? I'll get to the end. Then I'm gonna end you if you say so. No, no, let me out. Uh, sure, girly pop. <laughs> oh, I do like you this. I do. Oh, I do like you like this. So coy and pliable. So willing. So servile. That's me. Delicious. But on with my show, dear. My dear. Your job is to find your way through the labyrinth to me. I will be eagerly awaiting you at the exit with your final reward. <laughs> oh, you're bad. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you tried not to die too early. We wouldn't want to disappoint our viewers now, would we? So, to help you, I've been terribly generous and instructed my minions to scatter some useful tidbits around to give you a fair shake of it. I see one of them right now, right there in front of you. Honestly, when I said throw them about the maze, I didn't mean the bloody first room, you idiot. Imbecile. Get out of my sight! No, wait! I have a better idea. You just stay there until I'm finished talking to our guest. Apologies, darling. It's so hard to enslave good help these days. It looks like that suitcase has been left for you. What would you like to do? Uh... Fuck the suitcase, we don't need it. <laughs> Wonderfully wary, my dear, keep up, keep that up and we might very well meet sooner rather than later. You step cautiously away from the case, careful not to touch it in any way in fear of traps. You look suspiciously toward the door of the cell. You hold your breath as you reach for the handle and breach, breathe out slowly as the door pulls open with no resistance, revealing the tunnel beyond. It takes a moment for your eyes to adjust to the new light. Dust dances in the air around you. The tunnel leads off to what you think of as a what the tunnel leads off to what you think of as north. Immediate darkness stretching before you, but you can see a small glimmer of light in the distance. The light at the end of the tunnel. Didn't know we were dying so soon. You take a moment to steady your nerves before stepping out of your cell and venturing forth into the labyrinth. That's it, my dear. Good show. Keep going. See you soon, my sweet. Lydia vanishes from your viewer as you cautiously walk through the unnerving passage. The strange weight of the helmet bows your head forward uncomfortably, causing a searing pain in your temples with every jolting step from where it was forcibly attached. You grit your teeth and trudge toward the light with a grim determination. A single lamp illuminates the corridor you find yourself in. The way back remains shrouded in an unnatural darkness, the light unwilling to venture from whence you came. The corridor continues forward with similar spots of light guiding your way, but you also see a left turn that seems to open up into a larger area. Which way would you like to go? Uh, uh, well, I mean, if RPGs have taught me anything, I've got to explore the path that's not right in front of me first. <laughs> first death. <laughs> you emerge onto an elevated concrete area. The sound of waves crashing against the walls greets you. A thrill of hope dances down your spine as you taste the sel Selene, uh, is this Selene? Air, sea air on your lips. 
There is a dil dilapidated, dilapidated boat covered in rubble in the center of the courtyard, and to the north there is a strange square stru structure. All around you is a waist-high wall overlooking the beckoning waters. I've always liked the sea. So beautiful and inviting, but also so deceitfully deadly. Choose carefully, my dear. Some decisions may be surprisingly volatile. <laughs> Can I jump into the ocean? Search the boat in rubble. Investigate the square structure and go up the wall. Ah! There we go! <laughs> you approach the wall slowly. You steadily... You steady your shaking hands by placing them on the cold concrete and lean forward to peer out over the edge. There's a drop about, uh, there's a drop of about 20 feet, then water. The murky depths promise freedom from this morbid game and liberation from the psychotic gaze of the Empress. The crashing sound of the waves hitting the stone below offers a warning of risk, but is it one worth taking? Hell yeah! <laughs> you take a few steps back, breathe deeply. You can do this, you can do this. Just one leap of faith and it's over. You gaze out over the coast, not too far. You can definitely make it. Yes, right. You breathe out slowly, deliberately. Then you spring forward, a few steps, leap, then air. Did we, what, did we actually make it? <laughs> Time seems to slow. Do a backflip. <laughs> Time seems to slow. The water moves lazily back and forth. All sound is drowned out by the gusting wind. You feel your lungs, close your eyes, body straight, ready to hit the water. Warning. What? Red flashes in your visor. Oh no, did I- No, did I go too far? Uh... <laughs> oh, okay, re I can return to last- Wow! You're pretty- Okay, great. <laughs> Whoa, did anyone see that? <laughs> Lydia's sitting on her chair being like, um, okay, well, I didn't think they'd, you know, be so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you search them on the wreck and rubble. The boat has a huge hole in its bottom and is com completely unusable. However, you do see an old fishing spear that still has its edge. Would you like to take it with you? Sure. It feels heavy, and you suspect it might be awkward to wield in narrow spaces, but you feel better having some sort of weapon with you. You find a piece of old rope, tied to the shaft and sling over your shoulder. Damn, we're suited up. Square structure? Structure? As you approach the square structure- <laughs> I can't say words. <laughs> you see that it has an opening. You peer in and can see some steps leading downwards. You take a bit of clearing, but you think you might be able to squeeze through. Sure. Ooh, you wiggle your way through the debris and find yourself at the top of a stairwell. You descend carefully, keeping one of your hands to the wall to guide you in the growing darkness. You can feel that the stairs are spiraling by the rounding of the wall. The steps feel treacherously narrow as you place each foot on the hewn rock in blind faith. A faith misplaced. You let out a scream as your next step meets only air. Oh, wait. Oh, we didn't die, though. You stand up, bruised and scratched, but thankfully okay. You look back at the hole you just fell through and see only darkness. Your only choice is to go forward. The area seems to be built like an old air raid shelter deep underground. The air smells humid, and a sickly sweet stench of rot perverts the air. The junction itself seems well made, but as you look to the northern route, you can see that it seems almost freshly made. The painted white walls end and are replaced with freshly hewn rock. <laughs> Shit, we should have just stayed on top. <laughs> the jagged stone constricts the deeper it goes. You may have to crawl if you wish to venture in. The path south leads to only darkness, whereas to the east there is a white door. Which way? Uh... Now I get some constricts deeper, you have to crawl through the dreams. Only darkness. To the east, uh... Thank you. 
the door? Oh, girl. <laughs> you enter a room with five white doors on the northern wall. To the south lies a dark path with a distant solitary light. Welcome to your first real test, darling. The generous soul that I am, I have furnished you with five options. I know, I know. I spoil you, darling. Each of these doors lead to a different, devilishly delightful challenge that will either lead you to your doom or perhaps a little closer to me. Cross for cross. <laughs> the sign of safety and health. Kiss, kiss, darling. Do try not to die. Ciao, my lovely. You look at the different doors in front of you. It doesn't seem to be any discernible difference to them, other than the emblazoned icons that each wear. Which will you choose? The dark southern path. What? Um, so there's would you still love me if I was a worm? There's uh a heart across waves and tree. Um <laughs> Okay, we'll go the Red Cross. Oh wait, I guess I'll... Oh. You come to a large open room. In the center of it sits a table with a crystal decanter and a note sitting under it. <laughs> oh shit! Looks at the crystal decanter. Is that you, Nick? <laughs> On the northern wall, a large fireplace dominates the room. To the left of the mantle, there is a door, and on the right side, there is a staircase going eastwards. Uh, the, the, the table. A little ornate table in the center of the room holds a beautiful empty crystal decanter. At the moment, it's only dusty. It's only dusty is that of a paper weight holding down a handwritten note in a flourishing script. You pick up the note to take a closer look. Secret to a longer life lies within the bottle of the perfect blind. Drink up, darling. Uh. Return the note to the table, remembering its words for later, and continue your investigation of the room. Oh, it's just it's the same thing. Okay. Fireplace. As you get closer to the fireplace, you notice that the back of the hearth is false. And if you crouch down, you could walk through to a secret room on the other side. Oh. I can leave through the fireplace. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I mean... Might as well. Maybe <laughs> now we got bad blood. You know, you used to be mad love. Let's take a look at you. Okay. Behind the hearth, you find yourself in a cramped room. You see four bottles uh, in, in a recess on one of the walls. Around the wall, you can feel a delved edge that hints that the wall might be able to open up, but you don't find any mechanism to trigger it. From behind, you hear the sound of stone grinding on stone as the fireplace closes up. Poor, poor little mortal, trapped like a rat. However, unlike the rodent, Taking the bait is actually your only way out. You must drink from one of these bottles. Once you open the seal, you are committed to your choice. Choose correctly and the door will open. Make the wrong choice and, well, let's just stay positive, shall we? Good luck, my fleshling. You lift each of the bottles up for closer inspection, but the opaque glass offers no helpful insight. All you can tell is that each of them is about half filled with a liquid. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Drink from one of these bottles. Okay, well, I mean, the note is what? Secret to a longer life lives with a bottle of the perfect blend. But how do I know what the perfect blend is? <laughs> 
Should I have looked at the other rooms or something? I thought they would lead to death, though. Can I roll back enough to get there? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> or, I mean, I could process of elimination it, too. But... Oh, wait, no, no, no. Use the western color. Enter a small room. The opposite wall is completely decorated in various framed photographs. You step forward to take a closer look when something the floor drops from under you and falls into darkness. Jagged rocks sli slice at your face and clothes as you slide down a stone chute. You try to slow your descent but are unable to find anything to grip or gain purchase. You feel the rush of wind as once again you are ejected into the open air. Uh, are we dead? <laughs> you land with a crunch and crackle. You scramble to try and right yourself from the rubble pool you have been deposited in. Your eyes slowly adjust to the electric light after so long in the darkness. Look around to examine the unstable ground you find yourself in, and a mound of grinning skulls and bones stare back. So startled, you fall back, pressing tightly against the wall as you stare down, wide-eyed, at the horror of such a mass pile of bleached white cadavers. The smell of death hangs heavily, and your mouth is filled with the taste of salt and ash. <laughs> how are we how are we alive? I thought we died while falling down. With every movement, you create an unnerving rattle of sliding bone on bone. On your side of the bone pit, you see a corridor leading northwards, but to reach it, you must crawl over the remains of the dead. Do you... Uh... I... Uh... <laughs> I don't think that's right. Let's go <laughs> up the stairs. Or maybe, actually, I, I don't know. Can we go through the fire? Like, There has to be something that hints at, like, which bottle is right, right? If it's not through these other three options- but, like, these other three options seem to lead to, like, a whole different puzzle? Or not puzzle, but, like, a whole different thing? You take the stairs to the east and follow the path curling northwards. <laughs> okay, you know what? Never mind. We'll crawl through the things. You dig with your hands in the pile of the departed, not sure what you were searching for. With every bone shifted aside, another victim slides in to fill its place. What a macabre hound you are! Girly pop, shut up. <laughs> really? Really? Rummaging gleefully in the discarded remains of your predecessors? Trying to find your favorite bone? Bone, my little poochie? Would you like to bark for me as well? Ha ha ha, okay. <laughs> Ignoring her taunting, you continue to search until you are rewarded with a glimpse of something metallic, just as it slides out of reach. Get it! You scramble quickly and your hand closes around a long key. With no label or unique features, it's not clear what it might be for, so you put it in your pocket. Keep digging! It's hard for the in the sense. Oh no. <laughs> After the success of finding the key, a curious rush of adrenaline overcomes you. What else is buried here? It could be anything. Riches, keys, necessary puzzle items. You dig feverishly. You see a red glint coming from within one of the skulls. Using both hands, you scuffle with all your might as the red glow grows stronger. Oh, hi. Something latches around your wrist and starts to pull you downward. You try to struggle free, but the nothing will slow your descent. Dragged under a canopy of bones, you come face to face with a glowing red eye skull. <laughs> it cackles hauntingly as it continues to drag you deeper into the pile. Um... Oops. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> you slip and fumble your way across the avalanche of death, eventually landing towards solid ground. <clears throat> Of course, that was my plan all along. <laughs> Tool is clear history, never happened. 
You get to your feet and stare at the path ahead of you. The passage rises in a slight incline out of the bone pile and up towards another entrance. The floor is wet and slippery with what looks like a constant flow of blood. Ew. The journey is slow going as you place each foot and hand with care. An eerie glow emits from the gaps in the walls, pulse pulsing as you make your way up. You think you see movement in the glow. Startled, your foot slips out from under you. Oh. You start to fall, the crimson current trying to pull you back to the pit, when suddenly a spectral hand latches onto your wrist. You get your feet back under you again and watch as the hand drifts toward the glowing wall, finger crooking in a beckoning fashion. Uh... Follow a hand toward the glow, head towards the entrance. Go to the bone pile. Uh... <laughs> uh. I mean, it's friendly, maybe. Unsure and sensing a trap, you hesitate. The hand was strong enough to stop you from falling, so why did it simply ask you to follow it instead of dragging you? Was it too weak after taking corporeal form? <laughs> was it a lure to something worse? Or was it one of those so one of the souls lost in this hellscape trying to help? Consider all the options, but fall under the idea that if it wished you harm, it would have just let you fall. Carefully, you strafe toward the glow. Once there, you grab what you grab hold of one of the struts, securing yourself as the hand reappears carrying a small bell. It presses it to your free hand, and as you touch it, you hear a whisper in your mind. Sound the toll to come home. Those caught between life and death. Okay. Trapped in perpetual servitude. Release them. The final words echo in your mind as the hand evaporates into the wall. Uh, head towards the entrance, go to bone pile. It's slow going, but without any further incident, you make it to the entrance. You enter an old boiler. The steam hisses at you from multiple leaking pipes. The air feels suffocating and reeks of oil and sulfur. A huge boiler dominates the room with various dials rattling worryingly. A ladder leads up to an overseeing room with a door and a door leads eastwards. Um Would you like to go? Left boiler, climb ladder, and support. The, the boiler? You have close to the boiler to have a look. Various dials are straining with their pointers quivering in the red. The boiler itself shakes and vibrates under the strain of its purpose. Too long without service. Try running some knobs and cranks, kick it, leave it be. Uh, violence is never the answer. But fumbling and messing with things that we shouldn't is <laughs> indecisiveness the game. I'm about to pull out the dice and have the dice play the game. <laughs> you try some switches and buttons, but nothing seems to happen. You remember that you have seen in movies, people turn a crank to relieve pressure, that, and that solves the boiler problem nearly every time. You start cranking with all that you've got, but this is not one of those times. The boiler hisses angrily and steam blasts into your face. You can feel your skin dripping from your skull and try to scream, but the sound is swallowed by an almighty explosion. Well, I guess that means- yeah, I should've known that was coming. <laughs> I knew we should have had that service before we started the show. There is always just so much to do. That's what slipped my mind. Poor dear. Uh. Oh well, there's always next time. Be a dear and clean the stuff up and reset for next time. Oh, and call my contractor. Right. <laughs> Yippee. Okay. Um. Expect a boiler, but just like. What if I kick it? 
No one knows why, but sometimes violence is a solution when dealing with temporal machines. I just said it- okay. <laughs> a slap on the edge of the TV set, thunk on the monitor. Motor. A boot to the- to a washing machine. A boot to the head. Kellen's times this inexplainable method writes something wrong within the machinery and all starts to work out. This was not one of those times. The boy hisses angrily and steam blasts into your face. You feel your skin dripping from your skull and try to scream, but the sound is swallowed by an oh my god. Okay, all right. That's thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Climb ladder, eastern door, bun- okay. Uh, dub, climb the ladder. You climb the ladder and find yourself in a control room, with a desk filled with switches and buttons. Screens depicting security footage of the labyrinth shine on some of the consoles. You go in? Sure. You climb into the room and are amazed at the amount of tech and machinery that greets you. A myriad of lights, buttons, and dials, all of which you have no idea what purpose they serve. You step into the main desk and trap and the trapdoor slams shut behind you. <laughs> you run over to the door and try pulling it, but it won't budge. Oh oh no. An ominous purple gas starts to pump in from the vents above. You stay low to the ground, trying to buy some time to think. Key. You dig the key out of your pocket and shove it into the gap into the gap in the hatch. Springs open, you fall from the platform, crashing to the boiler room floor. A cloud of gas engulfs the control room above, preventing your return. Return to the boiler room. Well, that accomplished negative things. <laughs> Go in. Use the controls. Okay. Everything things why are you tamping your things you don't understand? Though I can understand them, Lydia! How am I supposed to grow if I don't learn from things I don't know? <laughs> it's a shame that I had to end this way, but I was growing quite fond of you for a mortal anyway. I was so looking forward to meeting you in the uh, mm, flesh, but rules are rules. You understand, I'm sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Alright. Um... I mean, I might as well use the key and whatever. <laughs> Inspect boiler, eastern door. You follow a passage until it... Hello? Opens up into a large, rundown room. Once it might have been a grand hall, but now it's nothing more than a crumbling room. A stench of bodily excretion... excretions overwhelms you and threatens to empty your stomach. Ew. You spy a few shift shuffling bodies moving aimlessly around the squander, unaware of your arrival for the moment. You can see the passageways oh you can see passageways leading both east and west and to the north. There's a door. You think you can use the broken pillars and rubble to creep your way to either the east or west passage without drawing attention, but to get to the north door you'll need to somehow get past the roaming th thralls. Which ways? Uh... Broken pillars creep your way to either east or west without drawing attention. The north, you'll have to get past the roaming frogs. North it is! You move forward from the rubbish heap to brick pile to crumbling wall, trying to inch closer to the door. Take a moment to try and observe the monster's movements to gauge any patrol or reason to their shuffling, but you find none. Yes, so sad. Sometimes my gift just doesn't take just doesn't take and what's left is an empty husk. What? Not dead, not alive, no thought other than hunger. Absolutely useless as servants, but surprisingly vicious when provoked. I like to keep them as guards of a sort. They're not picky eaters, so proceed with care, my succulent one. Perhaps you might join them? We'll see very soon. Mmm, so soon. Oh, I shiver in anticipation. How should you proceed? <laughs> Run for it, sneak, walk early, ring bell, attack, go back. The bell, right? It's because it was talking about, like, the little ghost hand was talking about something, something with the other ghosty figures. <laughs> you remember the words the specter told you. Caught between life and death, yeah. You take out the bell it had given you. It looked so insignificant, like any bell you could have seen in countless schoolyards across the world. 
you risk sounding it? The ghost had asked you to free them, but what if all it does is alert the thralls to your presence? Is this some sort some sick joke? Let the lamb ring its own dinner bell. Oh, let the lamb ring its own dinner bell. What do you do? Ring the bell. <laughs> I mean, if any- Look, look, you, me, whoever it is. <laughs> We've been here. We've been through death a couple of times. Okay, what's another one? <laughs> The spirit saved you once, and gave you this bell after that. If it, had, if it had wanted you dead, it could have already seen to it. Signing to trust the spirit, you tighten your grip on the handle, knuckles cracking. A bead of sweat glistens on your forehead as you watch the throng of thal thal thralls stumble across around the room. It looked more like- it looked like more had entered the room since you got here. It was now or never. With grim determination- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, what's another death? What's another death? <laughs> With grim determination and the fate already decided, you stand up from your hiding spot and ring the bell. An almighty gong resonates through the room, more befitting a church bell than the small trinket you carry. The shock of the sound wave ripples through the furniture and throws you from your feet, crashing through a pile of fallen foreboards. You struggle back to your feet, ears ringing and head pounding. All around the room, the corpses of the damned littered the floor, unmoving, finally at rest. Well, that was easy. You place a bell reverently on the floor beside one such soul, and step through the northern door. Why did we leave the bell? <laughs> uh, you hear the sound of the door sealing behind you. You try to latch, but it won't move. So you have chosen the path of servitude. How marvelous. The path of what? I have longed to have you prostrated before me for the longest time. Okay. <laughs> to be my eternal pen, 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 sa slave. Delightful! <laughs> Come, my pet. Leave me there. As Lydia disappears from your sight, from sight, you notice that the angled walls start to move in. Oh. In the near distance, you see another room. You make it before the walls close in on you. Uh, uh, run. It doesn't look that far to the next room. You can do this. The wall isn't moving that fast. You immediately break into a sprint. You run faster than you ever had before. However, you fail to notice that the faster you ran, the faster the walls closed. I had a feeling that would happen. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Crawl. <laughs> you take a second to observe the closing walls. They were definitely angled so that the top was narrower than the bottom. Also, Lydia had referred to this area as the Path of Servitude. She was exactly the kind of sadistic megalomaniac who would be thrilled at the chance of making her prey crawl for her pleasure. Yeah, we shouldn't- we should not be crawling then, we should just be- we should, like, go down, not on all fours, but on our stomach, and then, like, inchworm across the floor. <laughs> just make it as unsexy as possible. <laughs> Hearing down on hands and knees, you begin to crawl toward the next room. The walls brush your hips as you near the end, but you keep on, on the turn. You manage to pull your toes clear just as the way back completely closes. You stand up and observe the room and find yourself. As the rubble of the walls fades away, the sound is replaced with a shing of huge moving blades. You look around in wide-eyed wonder at the hellscape that surrounds you. An immortal death promised with the passing of each monstrous blade. Each blade seems to move on its own, move to its own tempo, and some even irregularly and at odd angles. Where are you right now? Not, dude, I have no idea. In my head, I was thinking, okay, I'll just like go down this path until I find an answer for the color bottle riddle. And now I am so far away from the color bottles that I literally do not know <laughs> if I'm ever gonna go back. Hang on, let me double check something. <laughs> okay, well there is five endings it says, so... Alright. But like, if it's a maze, I feel like... Don't, like, should it, don't mazes, like, have only one entrance and exit, right? 
Oh, huh. Oh. Oh, I'm so glad you get to see my prized collection. Prized collection of what? Donuts? <laughs> the engineers said it simply couldn't be done, but with some gentle persuasion, here we are. Although it did feel like we were going two steps forward and one step back at times. <laughs> it's always one step forward and three steps back. <laughs> How would you like to proceed? Uh, the fuck? Dance. Alright. Dance, dance, revolution. We stand still for a moment, simply listen to the rhythm of the blades. Oh, blades. Um, dude, my mind is slow. <laughs> you close your eyes and feel your body start to move on its own. In your mind's eye, you're no longer in the hell of horrors. No, you're on the marble tires, piles of the but butcherist royal palace. You spin and step in a dream. The blades surrounding the beat. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Hi. You picture yourself twirling in time with Lydia's, and Lydia's face fills your vision, startling you from your reverie, just as a pendulum grazes your cheek. <laughs> you fall back in shock, losing your footing. You look back at the room of death you had just rolled through, unable to comprehend what had just happened. You've never been to a royal palace. Not with her. Surely not Lydia. Wonderful. Breathtaking, darling. You are dazzling, my dear. I'm so glad something remains. It will all be the sweeter. It will all be the all what it will be all the sweeter when we meet. Lydia. Now focus. You pick yourself up and enter the next room. Uh you enter a small room with what looks like a well in the center covered with writhing barbed vines. You inch closer to peek into the hole. Oh, hello! The hand shoots up between the vines, fingers curled in agony. The vines wrap around the wrist with razor thrown thorns slashing into their captive. The hand falls back down, and a scream of pain comes from below. You cautiously peer in and see a thrall cradling its injured arm, looking up at you. However, unlike the others you have encountered so far, this one's eyes still show awareness and intelligence behind them. Please! Please! Release! The creature pleads, obviously struggling to find the words it wants. I- I think it's finding the right words. <laughs> open! Yes! Open! Why should I? <laughs> A reasonable question after the ordeal you have been through. Sympathy wells up inside of you for this wretch, but experience also advises caution. If I free you, how do I know you won't just kill me? I'm sorry, I can't risk it. You turn to leave. Oh, okay. Uh, no, no choice I get. <laughs> Free will is an illusion. <laughs> Freedom for that guy is an illusion. <laughs> you turn to leave. Huge, ornate double doors lie ahead, signaling the end of your odyssey. You take a step forward, and the hissing voice calls again. Please, open, kill. You see? You turn back, soul wrenching. Logic and heart colliding over the best course. I can't open it. You'll- You'll just kill- Yes, kill, kill, mistress! You're taken back in shock. Kill, mistress? Yes, open! You take a moment to think. What? Why should I free you? Revenge! The creature snarls. Open! Oh, okay. Uh, inspect vines. You take a closer look at the vines caging the prisoner. They seem semi-sentient, pulsing and writhing towards anything that gets too close. Vicious barbs cover their lengths, like living razor wire protecting the pit. I think it might be possible to pull the vines aside to make a gap for the thrall to escape through, but you will definitely get injured in doing so. Those razor vines were too eager to coil, crush, and slash any vulnerable flesh nearby. Uh, I mean, I feel like if I create an opening and this guy does come out, like, it'll just end up killing Lydia. But, like, it seems like we have some kind of history with Lydia. I don't know. So, it doesn't seem like we should immediately push for her annihilation. <laughs> then again, she has also possibly threw this guy into the well, but like, you know, hey, maybe we're into that. 
Who kn Okay, let's just leave. <laughs> Better to safe than sorry, you tell yourself as you approach the ornate door. No! Uh, yeah, suck it. <laughs> please open! Ignorance, please. You shove open the doors and step out of the labyrinth. Can't believe we're here. <laughs> Maybe we're into that. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'm not here to judge MC for what their tastes are, okay? Finally, after so many ordeals and trials, we stand at journey's end. Hi. Rising from her chair, you come face to face with your tormentor, the mistress of the maze. The vampress, Lydia. Congratulations, darling. You're breathtakingly marvelous. Hello? She embraces you, throwing her arms around your neck and kissing your cheek. So few have made it here in all the years of running, running that uh, the labyrinth. I was beginning to think I would never be at the pleasure of meeting a contestant in the flesh again. Such a valiant act is deserving of a fitting reward, I think. And oh my, your escapades have certainly been entertaining. Now choose, my pet. No, fuck you. <laughs> I wanna die. <laughs> oh no, I want you to die. <laughs> I thought this was right. I want to die. And spear. I was like, shit, we... We stab ourselves? That's crazy! No, 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 come on, she. <laughs> Yo, you desires! <laughs> Alright, let's reel it in. Treasure, Sammy has already been my reward. Fuck you. Uh, I want money. Still such a greedy little piggy. That's me. The vampires looks deep into your eyes, a victorious smile on her lips. Very well, my gluttonous mortal. If riches is all you desire, then that is what you shall have. The vampire turns and gestures to a white waiting chest and steps back, still with that smug smile on her face. Kicking it open, the chest reveals its hoard, enough gold to start a small country. The servant bows to you before instructing its minions to heave the chest onto a trolley and tow it away. You follow them as they lead you out of through the castle. Lydia's laughter echoes behind you, and you can't help but feel that somehow she won. Huh? Wait, so <laughs> Wait, so so was the was the was but we have the money, but what what happened to us then? Okay. Uh, fuck it. Serving you has already been my reward. Where <laughs> we got <gotcha. laughs> That's why Lydia won. Lydia was like, yeah, I'll give you this money, but I know your crippling addiction to gacha games will just make you spend it all. <laughs> and <laughs> you won't actually benefit from anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what they meant by the first line when they said, or bad luck never gets better. <laughs> or, wait, no, what was it? No, never mind. It was bad luck does get better. I'll have to see it again. <laughs> oh my, how delightful. What an enchanting life we can have together. You do my bidding for all time. Me bidding. Oh, darling, it's simply wonderful. Now hold still. This will- uh, What? This will hurt, but I will enjoy it so. It has been so long since I tasted you, I wonder how different it will be with you as mortal. Ugh. You belong to me now. Didn't know our neck sounded like an apple. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... If we're into that... If it <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> then again, I don't think you could you could easily find like sound effect for someone biting into your neck. <laughs> uh, fuck you. I was hoping that when we meet face to face, you might have learned a mo uh mod mo modicum of. 
respect for your superiors. I have endured your comments throughout this broadcast, knowing that you shall taste all the sweeter when I finally get to drain you dry. I heard every single word. And each time I soothed myself with the knowledge that I will soon get to rip that fucking thread. What a messy apple that was. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Great. <laughs> I want you to die! You lower your spirit and drive it through the vampire's chest, staking her to the wall. She screams and re- writhes, but is unable to free herself. Oh shit, what? I thought she would just kill us again. Talons swipe at your face, but you step back to watch her impotent rage, a wry smile on your lips. Turning on your heels, you leave Lydia screaming in anguish behind you. Exhaustion is threatening to overwhelm you. You stumble through the castle in a daze. You come to the entrance and throw open the doors. You take a moment to stand on the steps, feeling the night sky on your face. The taste of freedom filling your soul. Oh shit. That was the- that was the right move? To kill Lydia? <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, from the hints, it seemed like... What, we were a vampire before, and... Um, uh, and Lydia, uh, and somehow we became immortal, but, like, Lydia knew us before when we were a vampire. So let's see, what if we let the guy out? <laughs> you put your hands hand up to your sleeve in an attempt to get some sort of protection from the blades. You reach for a coil and grab it, but the barbs pierce your sleeve, drawing a pearl of blood from your finger. You flinch back, shaking your hand to ease the pain and, and to psych yourself up for another attempt. Alright, alright. Don't we have the spear still? Can't we, like, just use the spear to kind of shove the vines away? When I say go, you get out, right? I don't know how long I can hold this. Yes! One, two, three, go! You grab a handful of vines. You feel slashes of pain in your palms as the vines thrash in your grip. You yank them back to make a hole just as the creepers slither up your arm, slashing and prickling as they coil. You scream in pain and effort. Your grip starts to slip as blood pours down your arms, dripping into the well. The creature, seeing you weaken, wastes no time scurrying free. Once clear, you let out a guttural yell and rip yourself free of the vine's murderous embrace. Gill! The creature hisses and flees hysterically back into the labyrinth. No, wait! You call too late as the wrench vanishes into the blade room. <laughs> We're losing- it's okay, Lydia will lick it up. <laughs> also, apparently killing Lydia seems to be the right answer, so... Maybe just letting this guy do it will be okay. Nursing your blood-drenched hands and arms, you regretfully turn back to the engraved doors. Using your shoulders, you push them open and step out of the labyrinth. Finally, after so many ordeals and trial, you send it. Right? What? Where? Where's the? What happened to the prisoner? Oh shit! A red line crosses the beautiful neck of the vampiress. A look of shock contorts her beautiful face as she. Her head slides slowly from her shoulders. Yes! Kill! Free! The thrall you liberated from the pit raises his bloody axe to the sky and screams in triumph. You walk over to the treasure chest and kick it open, revealing enough gold to start a small country. The thrall nods in satisfaction and sets off back into the labyrinth, leaving you to your riches. What? Wait, how did we die? <laughs> But are we alive? Cause what? Did we? Did we? Die? <laughs> we died from too much. It was too much gotcha. <laughs> too much gotcha. We died. Whoa. Help. <laughs> 
What if I kill Lydia before the thrall gets her? <laughs> you lower your spear and drive it through the thing. Oh, oh wait. He's... And then, and then... <laughs> Huh? With the head severed, the sacred body disintegrates to ash and your spear clatters to the ground. The head of the vampire rolls to your feet and you pick it up by the hair and toss it to a nearby servant who drops it in horror. The throw nods in satisfaction and sets off back into the labyrinth, axe hefted for more bloodshed. Exhaustion threatening to overwhelm you, you stumble through the castle in a daze. Come to the entrance and throw open the doors. Take a moment to stand on the steps, feeling the night sky on your face. Um... <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, well... Huh? Okay, okay, well what if the ones where we die, right, but the prisoner then kills her before? You know, sadly. A shadow falls over you and you look up to see the thrall standing over you, axe raised. Ooh. Wrong choice. <laughs> Choose the wrong side. <laughs> the thrall was literally like... Like... Choose someone better. <laughs> Don't fall for this shit. <laughs> Okay, uh, fuck you. <laughs> oh, you, uh... You spit on the vampirous, a vampirous corpse and boot her head across the room. The thrall nods in satisfaction and sets off back into the labyrinth, an axe hefted for more bloodshed. You walk toward the doorway leading into the castle proper, the servants falling in fear at your feet as you pass. You leave them be, safe in the knowledge that they will all die here when you burn this motherfucking place to the ground. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, that answers a lot of things. Okay. Wow, we did not give that many deaths. Alright, well, I'm fucking curious about the bottles. I cannot- I- There was, like, nothing- Like, to tell me which bottle to drink. Okay, so I went to the western- Let's go to the stairs. <laughs> you come to a junction with stairs leading in three different directions. North. You come to a- a wide junction in the path. In the middle of the fort, you find an ornate cauldron. It glows slightly with an aura of the arcane that tickles the back of your memory. You peek inside only to find it empty, except for a matching chalice resting in the bottom. You suspect this is the cup from which the thralls collect the blood of the contestants as an offering for the mistress. Cool. Make the chalice go south. Oh wait, maybe we're supposed to drink this one. <laughs> <laughs> you grab the chalice and take it from the cauldron. You can almost feel the life force of countless sacrifices who had dwelled within this accursed cauldron. Perhaps it can be used against the vampires. But which way should you go? Uh, girl, I don't know. <laughs> Um, eh, go south. You turn to the wide junction. Oh, okay. Wide junction, okay. Uh, go to large west opening. Oh, this is, we're back here, okay. Well, northeastern path. Uh... You follow the path, cautious of what might wait around each bend. 
It's not long before you come face to face with the pain visage of a gargoyle carved into the wall. You notice that a parallel path also leads to this wall from the opposite direction. Wow, that's a face. <laughs> Inspect gargoyle. Uh, you know, actually, um... <laughs> Here's the funny thing you can do the next time you see any sort of statue or stone carving with any resemblance of a human face, right? <laughs> Not the weird face, no, stop! So, um, what my- what one of my, uh, friends used to do to, like, the- like, the statues is that they take their finger and they pick the nose and then they shove it in their mouth! <laughs> Just like completely out of nowhere, it would be like the statue of, like, I don't know, some guy at like a Chinese restaurant, and then you just walk up and pick the nose, put it in the mouth. <laughs> That's all I can think of when I see this. <laughs> that one, like, there's like a One Piece restaurant around an area somewhere. I remember going to, and the One Piece restaurant had like a, a a large figure statue of Zoro, like in the center of the restaurant. <laughs> Unfortunately, it says you cannot touch. But like, if you walked up, hypothetically, if you walked up to Zoro, you could do the pick, eat your booger. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Well, next time you see a statue, here's what you can do. What's the, um, isn't there like an Abe Lincoln somewhere where like if you rub the nose, it's like good luck or something? <laughs> and his nose is all shiny from people rubbing it? Yes, 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 okay. <laughs> Lincoln's tomb and lucky nose. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, instead of rubbing Lincoln's nose, you could just pick it. <laughs> Twice the luck! Okay. You inspect the gargoyle closely, its hideous face contorted in hellish hunger. Mouth is gaped. Uh, the stone of the tongue appears to be a slightly different shade from the rest of the sculpture. I wonder if it would feel different. Is it a hidden switch or could it be a trap? You want to put your finger in the gargoyle's mouth? Uh, hell yeah. You wince slightly as you slide your finger into the gullet of the statue. You feel the tongue click down and you quickly whip your hand away from the rock just as it starts to shudder. Dust and rubble starts to fall to the ground as the entire wall starts to sh shake and slowly rise. Okay. As the last tremors fade away, you find yourself before an extravagant looking entrance hall. Luxurious carpet softens the floor underfoot. And you can feel the welcome warmth of the candelabras from here. A dual staircase lies at the other end of the room, with one case heading left and the other right. Congratulations, darling. You have made it to my humble abode, but we are not quite through with you yet, are we, my loyal viewing subjects? Of course not. So in order to make it to me and your grand end, you must choose which staircase you ascend. But I think making it this far deserves its own modest reward. I know, I spoil you, but I do like to treat pets who please me. And you, my dear, have been marvelously pleasing. My appetite has definitely been whetted. So, I think a clue for what lies ahead is well-deserved, my sweet. Now, of course, all paths inevitably lead to yours truly, but the road you choose will have its own unique, shall we say, thematic challenges. The left stairway will take you down the path of sacrifice, whereas the right will bring you to the path of reflection. Both will be frightfully dangerous for you, but also terrify terribly entertaining for me. She's well, my lovely. Which way? Didn't we go down this path? You had only entered this contest because you felt you had nothing left to lose. If this labyrinth had any silver lining, it's that you are now ac acutely aware of how precious life is, and no matter how- uh, no matter the struggle you have this- and how- no matter the struggle you have this- no matter the struggle, you have the strength to keep getting up. Your knuckles whiten as you grab the banister and pull yourself up the first few stairs, determination fueling every step. Oh girl. Also, wait, aren't we still literally holding on to that giant chalice of blood? Like... <laughs> you enter what appears to be some sort of conference room. 
A number of chairs surround a long table, and on the far wall are two whiteboards, each bearing a huge button. One red, one blue. Welcome, darling. Now, usually there would be more contestants here, and they would have to agree upon which button they would press, but today we just have you. On the bright side, that means we'll have less pe less petty arguments and squabbles. Although my viewers do enjoy watching the mortals resort to violence toward each other. Huh. But I'm sure this will just be this will just be as fun. Well, I'm sure this will be just as much fun with someone as marvelously fascinating such as you, my dear. Now the good news is, no matter which button you press, the door to the next room will open. Isn't that wonderful? However, depending on which button you press, someone will die. Oh, I oh I do so love this devilish game. Now I'm sure you're on the tenter hooks about finding out who our unlucky sacrifices might be. So without further ado, push the red button and hear a speaker crackle into life. Friend, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I swear, I only I thought they I only thought they wanted to meet you. I need the money. Please help me. I have a dog. <laughs> Yes, yes, enough of that. And behind the blue button... Uh, I'm so sorry, mistress, it won't happen again. I was only trying to help. Please spare me. And there we have it, my dear. Choose the red men button and the so-called friend who set you up and sent you to play my little game will die. A woman you have worked for- Oh, a woman? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> you have worked with for years. Uh, thought of as a friend, sold you out for less coin than your annual salary. So cheap is a mortal's life bought and sold. However, push the blue button and my servant, who idiotically left a present for you in the starting cell, will be destroyed. Oh, the present that I literally did not open? <laughs> right. <laughs> Nameless, one of many. Disposable. However, they did try to help you against my wishes. They say that no good deed goes unpunished. Unpunished. We shall see. Time to choose my ruthless beloved. Uh, time, it's time to choose my ruthless beloved. Red or blue? Uh, the, uh, uh, where's the button for? I literally don't care. <laughs> like our friend sold us out, and it's like, uh, yeah, that's pretty shitty. Blue is some person I've literally never known, but they did try to help us. Right? Uh, no, I probably still saved a friend. Even if they did something shitty, it's like, well, at least I personally know them. <laughs> Bye. You hear a scream as he pushed a button, but are blessedly unaware of the horror going on behind the wall. The silence stretches on for a moment before the door slides open. I never trusted him. Far too charitable, spending all his free time eating mortals. I guess I'll have to call the orphanage and let them know that they won't be getting that donation they so desperately needed. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Not sure how to feel. Your instincts kick in and you find yourself entering the next room. You find yourself standing in a simple room. Plain unadorned walls on every shade and a small table in the center, bearing a vase containing a bouquet of purest white roses. A door bearing the mark of the flower lies opposite. You suspect the door is locked, but check it, just in case to confirm your suspicions. It rattles, rattles uselessly, and you grunt in pessimistic affirmation and return your attention to the regal flower. Where is this? We really shouldn't have, darling. How oh, beautiful, though the color does leave something to be desired. Push the flower. The gentle caress of fresh petals feel like, feels like the softest silk to your touch. The incarceration of unblemished innocence. Touch the thorn. They that dares not grasp the throne, the thor thorn, <laughs> should never crave the rose. The thought brings a wry smile to your lips. You extend a finger, allowing the throne, the thor oh my god, the thorn, to prick deep. A bubble of purest claret uh, forms on your fingertip. A morbid fascination forms in you as you stare at the bead of life swelling from such a small puncture. So we touch the throne thorn, and our finger is bleeding, right? And then we touch the flower to color it red. But don't we literally have a chalice full of blood? Can we not? <laughs> can we not do some Alice in Wonderland, like type shit, and just like dip the flowers in the chalice and like, hey? <laughs> you hold your hand over the petals, the blood droplet hanging precariously over the pristine incense of the bloom. You clench your hand, and the droplet falls. 
The corruption of Scarlet spreads quickly, the petals drinking deep the vit vi vit vit yes. <laughs> the blood pulses through the flower veins as the stained petals flaunt their new crimson coat. Simply ravishing. The door swings open, beckoning you to the penultimate room. You step forward into an entrance hall. A huge ordnance door heralds an end to the labyrinth and promises an encounter with its mistress beyond. However, in the hall there appears to be a large stone fountain. The font is still at the moment. The font is still at the moment, but you notice what appears to be an odd stone nesting on top, plugging the spout. What would we like to do? Remove plug, I guess. It takes a bit of forcing, but you manage to remove the stone cork and throw it aside. You start to hear bubbling within the sculpture. It is closely followed by the trickle of liquid. Oh no! Not the blood! <laughs> what about my chalice blood? Scarlet dashes the stonework as it flows forth from the spout, pooling in the fountain basin. Blood. The offering font fills and iron mist diffuses into the air, the metallic scent lacing every back. Little chalice? Oh! I guess... You take out the offering cup you have been carrying. Uh, I thought it was full of blood already, was it not? Okay, well, it glows in reaction to the lifeblood nearby. You dip it in and take out an offering. The runes of the chalice illuminate with otherworldly power. Uh... Uh... Might as well give it to Livia. Walking carefully with the cup, you push the door open with your shoulder and step out of the labyrinth. Hi, it's us again. I bring you this offering. How thoughtful. You know, I could use someone like you around here. Good help being, s being so hard to find and all. And you, my dear, seem fabulously adept at knowing your place and understanding that I will forever be above it. What do you say? What an enchanting life we could have together. You doing my bidding for all time. Me bidding. Oh, darling, simply wonderful. As you wish, mistress. Marvelous, ha, <laughs> truly marvelous. Yeah, hold, hold still, this will hurt, but I will enjoy it so. It's been so long since I tasted you, I wonder how different it will be with you as a mortal. Wait, so we- so we still get- we still get apple chomped! <laughs> Every time we submit to Lydia, she just eats us. Or, I don't know, I- honestly, I'm not- super familiar with the vampire lore is it like when isn't it like when a vampire bites you but like if you don't die then you just turn into a vampire question mark um also this does not answer my my uh what do you call it my question about the, the bottles i still don't fucking know <laughs> Okay. Let me go here. Let me grab the chalice. Uh, no. This, this was that. This was that. South? Oh, that was back here. East. I did not expect a human face. You emerge into a wide junction room with a crossing path going both east and west. A door bearing the wave mark stands on the southern wall. It's amazing how the mind focuses on the mundane in the face of horror. Forcing yourself to focus, you make yourself look at the body staked to the wall. The poor soul, with its arms and legs drawn apart further than should have been possible before having spikes driven through its flesh and into the rock itself. Thinking the wretch to be long dead, you draw close to inspect it further, when the head lifts and unseeing eyes open wide. Rainfield? My congratulations to you, Wanderer, on making it this far through my latest master's labyrinth. Yet the true trial still lies ahead, I'm afraid to say. 
To complete the duty bade me by my previous master, I must ask. What think ye of the Lady Lydia? She has a beauty uncompared. My eyes haunt my- Her eyes haunt, haunt, haunt my mind. <laughs> there are not words to describe my hate. She is a demon that must be slain. She is my mistress. My only wish is to serve her. Uh... 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 Why- Why is there no, like, in-between? <laughs> what did you miss? I've just been going through and seeing, like, what the other puzzles have since... Like, there are hints to kind of, I guess, like, the backstory of MC, but <laughs> I've just been extra lost. <laughs> uh, we made it to the end again, but this time with the chalice, and we filled it up with blood, and we gave it to Lydia, and we were like, Lydia, let me serve you. And Lydia was like, ooh, that sounds great. And then she bites her neck with the apple sound, and we still die, <laughs> assumed die unless we turn into a vampire i for i forget how vampire lore works <laughs> uh the um uh, she's a demon that must be slain let it be known that your choice has been heard now hear my word many have tried all have failed the legends have muddied the lore no not the vampire lore faith has no power as there is no one no one true path the gloves are distasteful but not deadly the stake only restrains, but not name. Running water is but a nuisance, and there is no compulsion upon them except that of the call of blood. No, there are only four tried and true weaknesses that the lords of darkness have to come to. Sunlight remains forbidden to them, forsaking their soul to the shadow. Removing the head prevents regeneration, however it is no easy feat to achieve. Well, that thrall did it so many times. <laughs> Third is the bite of an older or stronger vampire. The Albury is the path the mistress, from, the mistress walked in order to secure her domain and grow her own powers to beyond what was once taught. Her final weakness is of course silver, but only the purest element bearing the crowning mark will suffice for one as powerful as the mistress. A wound of silver cannot be regenerated. Now go, go now and find your way forward. I can say no more, and my soul yearns for an end. It has been good to sense the line of my master once last time. The call of the damned welcomes me with beauty fulfilled. Okay. The wretch's eyes close slowly, and the light fades away. Its head falls forward, finally at rest. Body now nothing more than a corpse once again. Stepping back from the departed servant, you contemplate your next move. Oh shit, we're back here. What? The door closes behind you and step forward into a room that is wall to wall deathly still water. At the opposite side of the pool, you see another door with a box just beside it. The water between you and your destination is dark in the gloom of the room. Its surface offers no insight into what lies with it. Dive in and swim across, dabble foot in the water. You gingerly dabble one of your feet in the water, sending ripples across the pool. Nothing happens other than the gentle sound of the disturbed water lapping against the sides. Very more confident, you put your whole foot into the water, just as a fin breaks the surface of the pool and rushes towards you. <laughs> With a scream of surprise, you fall backward and the fin, fin recedes back into the depths. Um, uh... I mean, well, for the death. <laughs> No, the sh- not the sh- no! <laughs> Your spear strikes pure- true piercing the beast maw as it went into for the devouring strike. Its indomitable force heaves you across the pool, your back striking hard against the wall. Monstrous shark death- shark's death throws- rip- rip the weapon from your grip as the last of your air escapes from your battered lungs. Panicking, you desperately scratch and claw your way up the wall and break the water surface. Exhausted, you flop into the concrete entranceway, just as another shark rises from the water where you had emerged. Too late. We actually made it through with a spear. That's crazy. <laughs> I thought we were. I thought this was just a death, man. Rebel, my mighty hunter. I see the memories of past lives haven't completely left you. Blood on a spear, the thrill of the kill! 
my darling. How I want to feel that adrenaline pounding heart of yours against my bosom just before I bite deeply into it. Soon. Yes, I yearn for your coming. I'll be sure to savor every last drop. After taking a few moments to catch your breath and ease the pounding in your chest, you set up to look at the box beside the door. It looks like it's another one of Lydia's gifts that have been dropped around the maze. This one looks more like a trunk than a briefcase, but in a similar design to the one in your cell when you first began this damned odyssey. What would you like to do? Time to open it! You'll put your hand under the latch to open the box. It pops open, but as it does, it slices your finger and tips deeply. You recoil instinctively, shaking your injured hands, spraying droplets of your crimson blood to the floor. The slight incline of the ledge draws the droplets downward into a slightly behaved, velved drain and leads the blood into the water. As the first drop of vitae hits the pool, the water starts to ripple as the creatures within gain the scent, gain your scent and enter a hunger frenzy. You watch on in horror with each second as a new fin breaks the surface, till a giant shark crashes from the water making the light mighty leap for you from the depths. What? Your only option is to dive out of, at the door, leaving the shark chomping relentless, relentlessly on air as the door swings closed. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> Expect the box. The lashes are razor blades ready to slice fingers. Oh, okay. I guess we will not be able to open it. How are we back here? Was the waves this room? Oh wait, no, shit. I didn't want to leave to there. I want <laughs> Tree? Walk through the door and follow a path until you come to a junction. The path ahead continues east and then appears to curve northwards. To the south, the corridor opens out to reveal an overgrown glass botano bon botanical building. Uh Hi. <laughs> the path curves northwards as expected and brings you to an arched entranceway. Step through that enclosed courtyard, and an intense feeling of deja vu or overwhelms you as you stare at the large monument in the center of the clearing. Look, this is another statue you can do the th <laughs> the thing with. <laughs> pick, pick, eat. You step through into yes. Okay. <laughs> I thought I had asked for that thing to be removed. I've always reveled that disgusting effigy. No matter, they shall be gone soon enough in any lingering remnants of the previous- <clears throat> Oh, like the previous ruler of the mansion? The past, is the past is easily rewritten. Come to me, my sweet morsel. All will be put right very soon. Barely listening while the vampire was talking, your attention kept drifting towards- on the statue. There was just something so familiar about it. Inspect. Your hand moves on its own, brushing the stone almost tenderly, fingertips gliding along the stone surface. Ah. You're not even sure what you're doing until. Look. The panel opens up in the statue's base. You glance inside and find a note written in your own hand. Oh. They come. Betrayal from those once held dear. If found, know that this manse now obeys a new master, but some things are rooted too deep to be tampered with. On the path of sacrifice, only blood will show the way. On the path of reflection, always move forward. The watcher of the past only brings woe. The hunt nears its end, and time is short. Dearest Lydia, how can I not see that it was not me you loved but my throne? Oh, so, so were we the past ruler of the mansion? And then Lydia was like, hey, baby girl, let me get in on that mansion. I mean, your love and affection. And we were like, oh, yeah, cool, come in. I've always wanted a goth girlfriend. And then she took the mansion from us. <laughs> Hands shaking, uh, you drop the note back into the compartment and push it closed. <laughs> Forgive me, QQ, for I have sinned. <laughs> hey, no problem, man. I mean, like, what I what I just said about, like, the revelation that we were the, possibly, the previous mansion owner, and Lydia, who was 
the owner of the mansion currently got close to us in order to steal it from us and then like somehow it either erased our memories killed us or somehow turned us because we i'm pretty sure we used to be like a vampire or something and then somehow we got turned back into a mortal because we're mortal right now right and then lydia was like oh but we have like such a history together or something <laughs> but like we don't remember any of it because we're a mortal i don't know i don't know how the vampire lore works <laughs> if if we were a vampire and we died would we turn into a mortal that i no i feel like no we would just die right <laughs> So many questions. How do you go? I know, like, how mortals can turn into vampires, right? Because, like, I, I've I know that from from some stories, uh, like when a vampire bites a pers human person, like they can turn into a vampire or something. But like, I've never heard of it going the other way around. <laughs> I don't know, man. I didn't watch enough Seraph- Seraph the end for this. <laughs> you drop the note back into the compartment and push it closed. Shaking your head to help clear your mind, you walk around the monument and continue your journey. Okay, what were the other options? Move on north. Oh. West. Oh, that's just that guy. Head south. Back here. <laughs> I will tell you because I still stand next to them. No problem, man. Just like... I've already technically completed the game, like I've reached the ending, right? But there's still a lot of, I guess, lore within the other paths. Um. But it seems like the endings, for the most part, are the same. It's just like, if you go down different pathways of the maze, you learn more about, like, what happened. And that's what I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> so, just stick along around for the right. Stick around for the right. <laughs> okay, so path east was this. White door west. Oh, this thing. Okay, botanical structure. You push open the greenhouse door with a bit of effort. The door seems weighted in order to keep it closed. <clears throat> as you enter the humidity as you enter, the humidity hits you like a wall. The very air tastes thick in your mouth. The walls of the interior are coated with vines and strange plants. Across from you, you spy a door through the greenery, but that is not what you had you concerned. Disbelieving your own eyes, it takes you it takes a moment for your mind to comprehend what you are unable to tear your eyes away from. Oh! Hi. Just to your right, not ten feet away, lies an enormous sleeping tiger. Oh, Marvelous, I see you found my dearest kitty cat. Isn't he just ravishing? Now, come to think of it, I can't bring my mind to the last- I can't bring to mind the last time I fed him. Isn't that silly? The poor beast must be famished. Tread carefully, my lovely. I know that I've seen this puzzle before. The truth is, the tiger is just actually dead, <laughs> and there's nothing to fear. <laughs> While Lydia's laughter fades in your ears, your eyes remain locked on the monstrous beast. Hmm. Um. Anyway, I'm gonna ignore that comment. Thankfully, it has hasn't stirred or noticed your presence yet. Hello, kitty cat. You have never witnessed such a majestic creature like this before. At least never in person or as close as this. Oh, hi. <laughs> as you draw nearer, the beast lifts its massive head and lets out an enormous yawn, revealing the largest teeth you have ever seen. You reach out a hand toward it as two predatorial eyes snap their attention upon you. Uh... You only have an instant to realize what the hell you were do you're doing before the tiger pounces on you and tears into your flesh. Okay, well, I mean, I thought so. <laughs> Nick, are you okay? <laughs> well, 
life. You inspect the plants growing around the glass walls. You don't seem to recognize anything in particular. They all seem to be strange hybrids of various plants. Only the smell of garlic permeates the air. You're leaning closer to inspect a plant with light lavender flowers that you thought looked familiar. So intent- uh, so intent on your investigation were you that you didn't notice the approach of the stalking predator until it pounces you. <laughs> Not again! Crouching bolt. Crouching bolt in this leaping tiger. <laughs> okay. Um, wow. Try and get across to the other door. You walk slowly and slightly across the room, eyes locked on a slumbering beast. Each step is an exercise in control, willing your body not to make a single step. You pull the door closed behind you and sigh a huge breath of relief. Oh, we made it! Oh shit! Color! The small office you find yourself in has barely enough space for the workbench that fills the opposite wall. The bench is littered with a bunch of in-progress tasks all just left wherever the occupant had space to set them. <laughs> is this- is this possibly the clue to the bottle puzzle? <laughs> Do you use the tiger phrase and stop the position of tiger? <laughs> oh wait, is it- oh right, it's, it's crouching tiger, hidden dragon or something, right? <laughs> Front and center of the table in front of you, you can see the racks of rack of vials with a white liquid inside, along with some unmarked flasks of chemicals. What white liquid? A series of scattered notes covers the left side of the bench, and a dossier folder is the sole occupant of the far right side. You cast your eye around the room and see what else you can find. The walls are the same reinforced glass, coated in the creepier creeper vines you notice in the main hall of the botanic house beside the door that you entered from is an old beside the door that you entered from is an old refrigerator oh beside the door that you enter from is an old refrigerator surprisingly you can hear it humming as it continues to work vials <laughs> Nick. you examine the vials and notice that each one is labeled with a series of numbers and amount 250 mg 500 in a thousand. You uncork the vials and the stench of garlic assaults your senses. You probably plug them up again and attempt to fan away the scent with your hand. Below the rack you see a note with an hasty scroll. Initial tests prove promising, increased dosage gradually to build tolerance. Oh, what is she trying to become like because Vampires and garlic don't mix, right? Is she trying to become immune to garlic or something? Milk. <laughs> yes, I knew that. <laughs> yeah. I thought grams were just mess. Never mind. <laughs> Take the vials. You put the vials in your pocket. Um. Look at notes. Oh. Scattered pages across the table are a jumble of various information, some old, some fresh, and blah blah blah. You pick up one of the more recent, still white pieces of paper and try to decipher its meaning. Remedium Vampire heads the following script that seems to detail a kind of ritual that is beyond your understanding, yet tickles your mind with an unsettling feeling of deja vu. Toward the bottom of the page, in a different handwriting, a note of caution was scribbled. The subject must not imbibe vampiric vi vitae lest the ritual be nullified. Other documents with different headings and tons lie amongst the pile. Restarver la mortalite. Memoria extergimus and magia sanguinitum. Do you not know MG? I know MG, I just didn't- like, it didn't click in my head, I was like, but like, for liquids, you would use ounces, right? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> I'm sorry, my, my stupid American brain <laughs> did not. <laughs> or leaders, leaders, yeah, that's right. That's right. It 
Right. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nick. I'm sorry. I don't. I I haven't taken chemistry in six years, seven years. I don't know. It's been a long time. I never took AP Chem because all the other kids, even though all the other kids were taking AP Chem because I sucked so bad at normal honors, Kim, that I was like, there's no fucking way I can take AP Chem. <laughs> I can't do that. I sucked so bad at AP Chem. Or not AP Chem, honors Chem. I drew a gravestone on my test. <laughs> one time and then the teacher went to find me afterwards and she was like hey dude that's not okay <laughs> even though you're this one <laughs> we love education Higher education, that is. <laughs> Given time and resources, you feel these would be interesting to translate. But for now, there's not much you can do, so regretfully you set them back down onto the table. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nick! Um, but, 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 okay. Well, I mean, from what I can deduce from, like, the, at least these things, right? Like, perhaps these were the concoctions used to turn us mortal, then? Or maybe? Maybe? You pick up a report simply labeled Magnetic Blades. You flick through the dossier as it explains the mechanicals and schematics of a murderous room in its construction. It goes into great detail about how the electric magnets used to swing mighty razors and how they manage to overcome stability issues. As you go to toss it down and pay, you notice a little note attached to this page by a paper clip. As requested, the control panel is embedded into the wall and hidden by a pressure open plate. The activation code is also set to 1260 as per your instructions. Oh. Okay, well, I mean, we got through that room just by dancing, though. <laughs> Look at refrigerator. You open the fridge and inside. All you find are large hunks of an unknown meat. Can you take some? Sure, why not? You grab a large hunk of meat. Nice. <laughs> All right. Well, um. Okay, so we got the potions. We got meat. Oh wait, we can give it to the tiger. Run! Try to get back into the room. Roar! Throw meat. <laughs> You throw the hunk of unnamed meat to the other side of the room. With the tiger distracted, you take your chance and dash for the door, slamming it shut behind you. <laughs> I should have just roared. ROAR! You make yourself as big as possible, arms raised high above you like a bear, and let out the loudest roar you can muster. The cat hesitates and circles around you. However, it seems to be keeping its distance, wary of this change in its pr Wait, what? Is it gonna work? ROAR, roar AGAIN! Roar means I love you and tiger. We're, we're just aggressively telling the tiger, I love you. Roar again. The creature roars back, accepting your challenge, but on its guard for what its unhinged human might do. The beast paces back and forth, eyes never leaving your own. Body low, ready to pounce, not willing to make the first move. You maintain your stance, trying to n tap into your primitive instincts. Snarling, fingers curled, in, curled as if ready to use your claws that you don't have. You do your best to imitate the feline predator. Legs wide and a power stance, you swivel gently to keep the tiger in front of you, protecting your flanks. In the back of your mind, you realize that the beast is no longer between you and the exit. Slowly, you start to yield ground, inching closer to freedom, all while maintaining a threatening pose. The tiger notices that you are backing down and starts to get into position for the pounce. You cast a worried glance over your shoulder, the door almost within arm's reach. You see the tiger move back onto its hunches, ready to jump. Immediately, you drop your own arms and throw open the door and leap through, yanking it close behind you. The beast crashes into the reinforced glass and you whisper a silent prayer of thanks that the steel frame held it at bay. <laughs> How did we get through that? 
three T posts on them and, and it was enough. What? <laughs> oh my, that burning fire that I remember from so long ago. Oh, darling, seeing your face down that gorgeous beast ignites something deep down inside me. Mm. Oh, how I simply must have you. You're mine, 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 mine. Hurry, my wonderful beastly pet. I'm aflame with yearning. Girl. I think I might just swoon, hee <laughs> hee. Girl. <laughs> Girl. Uh, what if we go back inside? You barely got out of life last time. Let's not time to be... Okay, well, but, like, logically, since we left without having to throw the meat, that means we still have the meat on us, right? So perhaps we can give it to Lydia as a gift. We can get the chalice again, and it'll be like, Hey, Lydia, let me treat you to a night of... Uh... Uh... A passionate dinner. <laughs> and you just, like, slide over the unknown meat, and then also the chalice of blood, and you're like, Hey... <laughs> I don't have the spear anymore, so I can't kill her. Okay, well... Back here. What is taking so long? I mean, really. Don't you know it's rude to keep a lady waiting? Well, if you won't come to me, I guess I'll just have to come to you. What? What? Huh? Okay, well, we've gone anyway, <laughs> ignoring that. I'm gonna go back to this room. Oh! Mm, yes, you're close. I can taste it. Uh, I didn't know there was a time limit here. Hello? <laughs> Is she gonna get us because we took too long? Hello? I just wanted to know what the lore was. Poor, poor little mortal, trapped like a rat. However, unlike the rodent, taking the bait is actually your only way out. You must drink from one of these piles. Once you open the seal, you have to blah blah blah, choose correctly the door will open, make the wrong choice and blah 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 blah. Good luck! We lift these the bottles for close inspection, but the opaque glass offers no helpful insight. All I can tell is that each of them is about half filled with the liquid. Wait, so I- I, I don't- Girl, what? <laughs> Wait, so I don't know what the potion- Do the potions not relate to this at all? How- I thought I finally cracked the- When will I learn- When will I learn what the thing was- Okay, well, I think there was red, green, and yellow. But no blue potion, right? <sighs> if I'm remembering correctly. <laughs> Just the limit- <laughs> I have rollback on my side. I can literally phoenix write this. Blue. You crack open the seal, raise the bottle to your nose, and sniff, but you don't detect anything strange. Are you thirsty, my pet? I am. I wish you'd be, you'd be quite refreshing. Ha ha ha. That'll be a good succulent morsel and drink up. You appear inside, and as best as you can tell, the liquid appears to be clear like water. Trapped all alone and with only one option available, you take a sip from the fluid. At first, nothing happens, but you don't feel. But then you feel your throat start to burn, and your abdomen cramps severely, doubling you over. Try to vomit, but nothing comes. Try to breathe, but nothing comes. You feel like you're being crushed from the inside. You collapse, and the bottle smashes on the ground beside you. Your eye's last image is the, that of the liquid hissing and smoking on the floor. Oopsie poopsie. Well, let's process of elimination. What if, what if, what if all four bottles lead to death? And like this entire time, I've just been an idiot. What, I've, like there, there's this feeling in the back of my mind that I was just like, well, if there's no immediate clues, what if it's just all a trap? <laughs> what, but that's like. <laughs> oh my God. That's the thing, like, but if you like play puzzle games and then you see something like this where it's like so clearly- Oh, wait, what? <laughs> wait, so it, it worked. The green one worked? But why? 
Was it the green? Was it green the potion that wasn't on the table? Or something? Did I remember wrong? Or... I don't know. <laughs> okay, well... Okay, well I guess it's green. Um, also... Green is the color... What do you mean? Green is not a creative color. Um, okay. Well, I feel like I've been to multiple places at this point. Or not multiple places. I feel like I've been to... Oh, shit. That just ends the game. All right, well, okay, wait, um... <laughs> I have an autosave somewhere. This one, right? Is it possible for me to somehow make it to where she is, uh, like, without getting killed by her. <laughs> I, I, I kind of want to end this playthrough, at least, since I found... I want to know what the bottles lead to and like what we learned with the statue. But like, I'm on that time limit. Uh... Oh shit, never mind. That face is scary though. See, I- oh wait, no, I don't have one! Ah! There's also a do not click there, I haven't checked that yet. Fuck, okay, fine, whatever. I'll just start over from the beginning. And I'll, like, actually open the suitcase this time. <laughs> what a green little piggy you are, just diving in right in with your grubby mitts. This case opens easily with a click. Inside you find a folded piece of paper held down by a curved dagger. You gingerly pick up the knife, feeling its reassuring weight in your hand. It has a short curved blade, about the length of your Sunyuk's finger. Guess that it might have once been used as part of some sort of ancient ceremony, as it doesn't seem very practical for a weapon. The gilded hit is adorned with red sparkling jewels, and only supports your theory that it was more of a more a blade of station rather than a device of defi def 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 uh huh? You peer closely at the blade, turning it slowly to try and catch what little light there is available. You notice a heavily worn down hallmark of a crown on the metal. Thinking it better than nothing, you put the knife in your pocket. You unfold the slightly crumpled piece of paper. The writing is done in a hasty scrawl, as if the writer feared discovery while scribbling. It reads, My mistress awaits in the northern part, northernmost part of the labyrinth. However, I caution you that the direct route is not necessarily the safest. I wish thee the luck that was not afforded me. Okay. Green was... Like, green was one of the bottle colors? Okay. That's also what I thought, too. So I don't know. <laughs> what was the... Oh, this just goes here. Okay. Um, well... Actually... So, I we've seen these three. Might as well check out the others, right? Warm. Oh, wait, that's just this. Okay. Heart. Mom, come pick you up. I'm scared. The door opens into an exotically decorated bowl door. Veils, curtains, and cloths cover the walls, and pillows lie scattered across the floor. A mysterious figure sits, lounging on the cushions, long luscious, long, luscious legs gleam in the light. Hello! 
The clo door closes behind you as you tread cautiously forward across the carpet. That's close smoke sensing. <laughs> as you get closer, you see more of the lounging woman. Hello? You say uncertainly, but there is no response from the shadow lady. She simply adjusts into a more inviting pose. One long finger hand one long fingered hand beckons you closer as bright eyes shine from the shadows, promising a pleasure beyond imagining. A voice whispers to you. Sit. No, I'm okay, Stan. Okay. <laughs> you sit beside the voluptuous woman and smile. Impelled, you sit down as if drawn by an unseen force. You lean closer, eyes closed, heart a flutter. Oh! Why did that one get me? <laughs> when you feel a sharp pain in your neck. You try to struggle, but strength forsakes you and darkness overwhelms. Yippee! I'm okay standing. A hissing snarl comes from the shadows before the wimble, which woman, before the window, before the woman leaps from the floor, fangs and claws extended towards you. <laughs> you run and turn back toward the door. The creature chases right behind. You barrel through the door, falling to the ground. A berserk fiend leaps on top of you, trying to sink her fangs into your neck. You smash your visor into her nose, get your feet under her chest, and heave her back into the room. Scrambling to your feet, you slam the door closed and hold it with all your might. You hear her clawing on the other side. You glance down and see a turn latch under the handle and switch it, locking the door. Stepping away, you breathe easy as the door holds. What if I- oh, I can't go back. <laughs> Okay, cool. Well, I mean, at least I know... I know what all the doors lead to now. Hooray. Oh, wait. Let me just roll... back here. Okay. So, it seems like I hit a time limit last time. If I directly just go to where I need to be to see that one thing... I think it should be okay. Oh, uh, head south back here. Go back here. Uh, other door. There is green. The one that isn't here is... was like yellow or something. I don't know! What... What does taking the vials do? Uh... <laughs> Roar. Roar again. We made it out. <laughs> okay, and then... Uh... Go back here. And then... We gotta get to Lydia, right? So, let's just go... In the middle again. Uh, fireplace. We know it's green, but I don't know why. <laughs> Last path and entrance. East. You should have taken it. No! What? Not a. No! But I haven't taken that long, have I? Okay, maybe maybe I I I don't go through the blood path, but instead I go through somewhere else somehow. Okay, if I go through the cross and take the stairs and go this way, Alice. No, that's not right. Visible confusion! <laughs> Mom, I'm lost. South? No, that's just back here. How do I- Where did I- Go? <laughs> Western- No- Wait. No, no, no. It was from- It was from where the chalice was. And then... Northeastern path? Oh, and then- Put finger in. Okay. 
Oh, okay, here, here, here. This is where I wanted to go. Okay. Because it said something about some, like, because we went Path of Sacrifice last time, right? And then we read the note and it was like, um, LMAO, you shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Reflection. <laughs> you always lived trying to get by, get by from day to day. You never had the luxury of being able to look to the future and as for looking back, your past felt fragmented, blurry, painful. The past held nothing for you other than a trauma best left there. Every time you try to recall beyond the life you have scavenged for yourself, your mind recoils as if from a dangerous animal. Yet you survived. You fall, you get up, you fall again, you rise even stronger. The past may be pain, but pain can be endured and overcome. <laughs> when will my reflection show who I am inside? You step one step at a time, you climb the stairs to face the next trial. No. <laughs> the stairs emerge into uh, onto a winding path leading northward. The wall behind you collapses ceiling in, leaving you no other object than to go forward. You may have heard the phrase, if only looks can kill. Well, my love, sometimes they can, haha. <laughs> you look up and see a chute above. <laughs> leading into darkness, but it is too high to be of any use to you. The tunnel you find yourself in looks more like a board than any man-made construction. The curved cave-like walls stretch eternally forward, a light beckoning you deeper. You cast a glance over your shoulder at the caved-in entrance before shrugging and continuing towards the light. You walk for a few moments and realize that the light is keeping distance with you, never seeming to get any- <coughs> Sorry. Never seeming to get any closer. The corridor winds and turns, and with each step, you get to, you get the unmistakable growing feeling that you're being watched. That itch in the back of your neck, the rising of little hairs, goose pimples, and shiver. Orclore write themselves off as, as mystic foresight or portents. That sixth sense that you are not alone lies within, within us all. And right now, it was blaringly, blaring cal calx calxins in your soul. Uh, eyes forward, keep going. Ignoring it, you continue onwards. The ringing of your footsteps echoes off the walls. For so long, the only sound you have heard now sounds discordant. An unknown pressure weighs on your head, vision blurring. The walls and floors seem to vibrate as your eyes strain. Keep going. With hand to the wall to steady yourself, you hurry down the corridor. At last, the light starts to find shape and solidifies into a doorway, just as a voice behind whispers, GUILTY! The quiet sound resonates like an avalanche in your mind, forcing you to your knees. Meet the gaze of your accuser and accept your penance of oblivion! Uh, your hands clamp your ears, your eyes squeeze shut, trying to temper the pain of the eternal whisper. Run for the door! <laughs> you force open one eye despite the pressure. The door is so close. You can do this! Don't look back! You stagger to your feet and stumble forward as fast as you can manage. Actually, now that I think of it, wasn't this the path of reflection? Shouldn't have shouldn't I have looked back? <laughs> Guilty! The shockwave of accusation smashes you into the door. With all your might, you push yourself up, gripping the handle, you fall through, kicking the door closed with your feet. Never mind, we made it. <laughs> Denial is the answer. Delulu is the Salulu. <laughs> The latch clashes, and immediately there is silence. The pressure, another memory of pain. Oh, hello. Well. Actually, I'm kind of curious. What happens if I do look back? Is it another jump scare? Oh, ew. You can have a furtive glance over your shoulder. The horrific eye of the watcher fills your mind. The suffering of eternity floods your sentence. Your mind flayed by the woes of millennia being forced into your soul. The great eye sees all and judges you guilty. Okay, well... <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> Eyes forward, keep going, keep going, run for the door, alright. Still sitting on the ground, you glance around. The room is filled with some sort of machine depicting both the sun and the moon and the large crank that looks like it would move the celestial bodies into different positions. Doors adorn both the no north and eastern walls of the mechanism's room, as well as the door you just fell through, but there is nothing that could entice you to open that again. 
The northern door bears an emblem depicting the sun and moon, whereas the eastern door lies, lies plain. You give, the door, you give the sun's door handle a try, but it doesn't budge. You suspect it to be linked to the machine, judging by the rails on the floor. Uh... <laughs> no problem, man. <laughs> QQ is understanding. QQ is kind. Inspect the machine. From where you first entered the room, you see two cranks. You give them a quick turn and discover one controls the movement of the sun and the other the moon. Each of the celestial lights appear to run on separate tracks. You follow the paths on the floor and suspect that, that there are three positions that look like there might be. There are three positions that look like they might be might do something. Getting back to the crank cranks, you try to work out what to do. Uh, block moon with sun. Block sun with moon. Have them be on the opposite sides. Leave it for a minute. Block. Sun with moon. As the moon covers the sun, the room dims and a shadow falls over the northern door. I mean, it's job might be all about it. I'm afraid the sun does take its toll on my fabulous skin. There's nothing more beautiful in the world than a solar eclipse. Present company excluded, of course. Haha. <laughs> the sun door slides open, allowing you to move on to the penultimate room. Oh, wait, we're back here. I guess, like, but that would make it eternal night, right? That's what she wants? Okay, well, we'll see this through, but I do have to see what the other thing is. Add vials to the blood. <gasps> here we go! Yes, we'll poison the chalice and then give it to her. And it'll turn her into a mortal, perhaps, maybe? The same way it did to us? Question mark? I don't know. We'll see. You take out the vials you have stashed away. You move the quartz and pour all four vials into the chalice. The scent of garlic immediately floods your senses, but is quickly washed away with ever flowing iron. You swirl the chalice, mixing it thoroughly. You check to make sure there is no signs of tampering, and you see and smell nothing. Mixing with the blood seems to neutralize the scent, thankfully. Please with yourself, you take the chalice carefully to the door and push it open with your shoulder. Stepping out of the labyrinth. Let's go. <laughs> the ultimate death for a vampire. Garlic! <laughs> we did it! Okay. Um, I have a gift for you! How oh, thoughtful. You know I could use someone like you around here. Good help being so hard to find and all. Maybe it takes a chalice for you to hold. A uh, chalice you hold for her and drinks deeply. Chalice falls from her hand as she clutches her throat. Oh my! You really think? Poisoned by my own beloved, how Shakespearean! Burns, oh how it burns! It. <laughs> her hand wraps around your throat, lifting you off the ground with ease. You are a silly, silly mortal, aren't you? You think there would be garlic in my domain, unless I expressly wished it to be so? I have been building up my tolerance to that disgusting flora for decades, darling. Okay, well, I th it was a good try, though, my sweet. But now I think I need a palate cleanser. No, it didn't work! Good try! Okay, at least it was different. <laughs> All that effort and it didn't fucking work. Was it- was it a different ending? No! Night air, roll, treasure, pet- WHAT AM I MISSING?! <laughs> Man horse- Okay, hang on. Try for the eastern door. Grab the handle expecting to lock the door clicks as you pull it open. You nervously enter the next room, not sure what awaits you in the darkness. You look around, and the room is completely bare, except for an antique mirror. You cast a look at it, but can't see any reflection in the cloudy glass. You start to turn away, but a sudden movement catches your eye. Oh, whoa! You look back again and see yourself staring back. That's us? Wave. <laughs> I you raise a hand and wave at your reflection. In anything else, it would have been imperceptible, but you're sure you saw a difference in timing from the reflection. Something isn't right. Uh... Jump. You jump up and down. 
The reflection merely stares and then slightly shakes its head. You try to back away, but as soon as you move your feet, the reflection's hand shoots out and grabs your wrist. No! The hand squeezes your wrist and starts to feel bone snap. The reflection pulls you toward the mirror, and with demonic strength, your feet sliding on the ground as you try to resist. Your attempt proves futile as you are inexorably pulled into the glass. Oh shit! It. Uh, uh. <laughs> that's, that's not right! That's, that's, the timing is not right! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm so- I'm so- dude, I'm so lost. I don't know what I'm missing. What have I not seen? Why do I not have the last ending? I don't understand. <laughs> Hi, I'm back. Creature releases you and you stare out at the thing wearing your face. You pound on the glass, but there is no sound. Your reflection smiles a grin that corrupts your face from all humor, exuding pure malice. The new you exits through the door, shutting it behind, leaving you silent in the darkness. Cute. <laughs> Do you want more? <laughs> Please, no. Please. Touch the glass. You raise a finger toward the glass, as does your reflection. And... okay, alright. <laughs> Leave. So it's just- that's just death? <laughs> when will my reflection show? <laughs> Block the moon with the sun. She whirls to life as you line up the astral bodies. As the sun sails in front of the moon, your large crank as it gears lock into place. Look at the door but see that nothing has changed. The sun starts to glow and you feel the heat radiate from it. The temperature rises quickly and you notice the metal of the machine starts to glow from the warmth all around you. Any worry, you try the other doors but nothing budges. Blisters start to boil- oh god. You stop and roll but the glowing steel lay on the floor only strokes the flight. <laughs> Did we stop, drop, and roll? <laughs> what? Smokey the bear is crying right now. Only you could say forest fire. <laughs> okay. <sighs> What's the last ending? Okay, opposite sides. Nothing happens. God damn it. So it's like only. There's only one way through, and it's to block the, block the sun with the moon, right? Am I stupid? I, <laughs> I'm really out here. Like, I like what? Am I stupid? I might be stupid. <laughs> like, and it's the first one too, so I must have just missed something. In my, in my in my path right i don't i don't understand what is there a guy to assume that apparent i don't think so Oh, wait, what? What? <laughs> Val Valhalations, you then package your files? I can access all your files right now, man. <laughs> you then package your stuff? I can see everything! Wow, I'll just cheat my way through the game then. 
Oh, the- Oh, right, the do not click! I- I forgot to check this. Okay, well, let's check this first before I go rummaging through RPI- RPY files. Hmm? Well, aren't you just a curious little kitten? And you know what they say about that, don't you, my sweet? Well, I suppose, with such a wonderfully inquisitive mind like yours, things like this are to be expected, no? Also, such initiative, I enjoy a res resourceful plaything. Though I can't let such an enterprising venture such as this go unrewarded, can I? No, 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 that simply won't do at all. So here you are, my darling. What? Was <laughs> I forgot I had the ring. What? Are you telling me this entire time? Okay. <laughs> but um, uh... I do hope you're happy with yourself. I'm not. I'm extremely unhappy right now. Of course, now I have to kill you. I know, don't make such a fuss. It's just a done thing, my dear. We can't have sensitive information like this amongst our out amongst the rabble. It's not like I enjoy killing you. No. I relish it. Knew too much. Wait, it's still not this ending though. <laughs> It's, it's still not the ending. It's still not the right ending. Okay, well, I might as well Take a screenshot of the map. Actually, I don't even need to take a screenshot. I have the files with me <laughs> That's right I I can bring the map. I have the map file <laughs> Okay, great. Um... Okay, but that's the thing, I'm pretty sure we've been through all the rooms, too. The last one in the true ending? I don't... No, I don't think there is, like, a true ending. There's just five endings, they said. So... That's the question. Wait a second. Oh wait. Yeah, that's the one we're missing. There it's like victory or something. That we don't have. I feel like I why do I get the feeling that like I I've you know done that? <laughs> what? <laughs> Cause like, bef when I, when we went to, you know, kill Lydia, it was like, um, like when we said fuck you and then, um, and then left, but we also awoke the thrall or something. Like it let us through, you know, like if we create an opening. And then we say fuck you, and then, and then like the thrall kills her, and then we spit on her corpse, and then we leave, and then <laughs> you leave them be safe in the knowledge that they will all die here when you burn this motherfucking place to the ground. But I don't, I don't know. Like I, I don't know. <laughs> Was but like that's not. I don't know. Time to browse the files and find out. Now that I have them with me. <laughs> if there's no ending guide, I will figure it out myself. <laughs> okay. Is this ethical? Probably not. Um. 
But I'm not about to sit here with a game half finished. Show us the picture, maybe in Discord? The math picture? Okay, so if I find, if I go looking for the variable of the victory entering that I do not have. Oh shit, there is a, there is a victory. Okay, let's look for jump victory then. If memory, I want what's, right, what's rightfully mine. Okay, wait, okay, so we have to unlock memory. Okay, 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 I'm not crazy. If memory, but where do I... Oh, I have to drink the thing! Oh, okay, 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 I got it, I got it. All right. <laughs> I thought that just seeing the paper would be like enough for the memory, but we got to drink the blood, I think. Okay, so if we if we do that, then we'll probably remember more clearly that like, oh, we were uh one of the vampies, I think. Well, we'll figure it out. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Move plug. Build chalice. Drink it yourself. You bring the chalice nervously to your lips. Not sure what to expect, you gently part your lips and sip slowly of the thick fluid. The chalice falls from your grasp, cra crashing to the floor. <clears throat> your feet leave the ground as you lift into the air, bodies stretched rigid. Spirits of the past haunt your memories and powers sealed away. Break the dam. Remembrance of a life lost. A life taken and a world turned upside down overwhelms you as you quiver in the grasp of the ancient ritual being overthrown. As sudden as it started, it ends, dropping you back to the floor. You land nimbly on your feet. You feel refreshed. Reborn, in fact. Your eyes go to the door and you smile. Vengeance will be sweet. Okay. So, so, so basically, we were, we were back into, a, turned into, like, a mortal. But the drinking the blood... Like turn us back into a vampire, <laughs> or I I don't know. Well, it's okay. <clears throat> you strike purposely toward the door, filled with the confidence of finally knowing who you are. The doors burst open as you throw them wide and step from your labyrinth. Finally, after so many ordeals and trials, you stand at journey's end. Oh, okay. I want what's rightfully mine. Lydia's eyes open in furious surprise. Whatever do you mean? I remember. I have no idea what you're talking about. Your hand lashes out, a blur, and grips her by the throat, smashing her into the wall. Leaning in, you bring your lips closer to her ear, your words coming out in a whispered snarl. Lydia von Mer Mercia, direct descendant of the Voivod of Wallachia. <laughs> self-proclaimed mistress of the maze. Nothing more than a usurper! You smash her head against the stone once more, your anger is swelling. When I found you, you were nothing more than a pathetic mortal, a thief, using your wiles to swindle let litrous lords of their trinkets. I sensed my great-grandfather's blood in you. I offered you my gift, brought you into the night court. You owe everything to me. And how do you repay me? No, I can explain. It was... Silence! I am the ruler of the night. I am the heir to the Dracul throne. A true-born vampire sired by Vlad Tepes himself. <laughs> you are nothing but a stray bitch I took pity upon. You are no true vampire. You dare turn... You dare to turn your dark arts against me? You called upon your pet... Mag Magilor and their magics to strip me of my memories and my rightful born powers. You made me immortal! 
I don't know how to say that word, but fuck you! You stole my kingdom, you stole my birthright, you squat in my home and call yourself queen! To hell I damn you, Lydia the Char Charlton. Your soul belongs to me. Well, we did it! <laughs> yeah! I just- okay, I just did not realize I had to drink the blood. Okay, but all our- all our- our, our uh, game theories had some weight, so yeah! Let's go! <laughs> um... Obviously we did not get all the deaths, but I mean, I wasn't- I wasn't planning <laughs> to do that one. <laughs> I wanted to get at least all the endings. Hooray! Okay. Yay! It's yapping time. <laughs> A couple things I didn't note down. Um, first of all, I think first I I enjoyed the game, obviously, but like, and I had fun with it. But it's definitely not an ending. You aren't wrong. But like, okay. Um. Uh. I okay. So game was fun. I enjoyed it a lot. I'm always impressed by uh, games made by developers, like using pretty much only, almost only, like, free assets. Um, I don't know. I, I could never. Because <laughs> in my head, I'm like, I'm like, oh man, like, looking for assets instead of, I don't know, like, making it yourself seems like, like, such a struggle. <laughs> and I'm always impressed by people who are managed, who manage to find free assets and use it in a way that doesn't feel like like completely uh what do you call it like ripped from a popular free asset source or something because like while i was reading the description of on their itch.io page they were saying how the the sprites for lydia like her hair was from like a specific asset but like other parts of her sprite were from other things Right, so like it's like some kind of Frankenstein monster <laughs> creation. <laughs> yeah, I'm also like I also think <laughs> what how what what do you mean how? I also think that the backgrounds and stuff were all really well done. I think they're also technically free assets, but they're just like edited in a way that fits the style of the game, which is very cool. <laughs> <laughs> she looked coherent. <laughs> yeah, right? It was like, Lydia's hair came from this. Right? Protagonist's shoulders came from something. That we had to make the protagonist as gender neutral as we could. Why not? I don't know, it seemed like... Like, the, like basically, like the hair and the, the rest of her were not part of the same... Same thing. <laughs> Yeah. It's very cool. <laughs> um, so, uh, a couple things. Um, I do like the overall theming. Because I played Travel Devil 2, I think this is definitely a step up from Travel Devil. Uh, like, there's a lot more... There's a lot more meat. Meat? There's a lot more juice content. In this one, it's very cool. I liked the the mystery with the main character and trying to figure that out. Uh, it was very fun for me. <laughs> A couple of things though, I think that um, like the the mystery solving for the MC feels like a pretty important part to understanding like the overall story, I guess, but they're, but you're able to complete the game and reach the endings without really solving everything. Like, there is one 
like the one ending that you figure things out is from this, uh, the victory one, right? Um, but like the other endings, like you could just end the game without figuring out what happened, right? Which, um, the th like in my head, I was thinking, well, like, oh, but like, wouldn't it make more sense for you to be able to? roam around in the maze for a while and try to figure out as much as you can before you, like, hit Lydia up. <laughs> or something like that, right? But there is- but then there's like a time limit that's set in place, or, or something. Where like, if you take too long, Lydia's like, damn, what's up with that? And she kills you afterwards. So, I don't know. Maybe it's because- maybe it's just because I play these types of games a bit differently, thinking about it in like a I have to solve the mystery sense, instead of getting- just getting to the end of the maze. Reminds me of Witch's House. I haven't played Witch's House! I was thinking of, uh, because of all the deaths, it was reminding me of, um, what's that game again? Mi- Misao? <laughs> I have, I have, I have it, <laughs> which is how scares me. <laughs> but yeah, um, oh, uh, in my head, I was thinking like being able to roam around and kind of figure out the mystery would be like the the more intriguing part of the game, right? And and perhaps having the freedom to do that in like an easier way might have been cool. I guess like like I don't know. Maybe it defeats the purpose of having it be a maze, but but not necessarily having like a mini map, but like having some kind of I guess log or notes that you can check of like what you currently either, like either what you currently have in possession or like what you've currently learned right so instead of like the memory flooding back to you when you drink the blood it's kind of like oh you you learn bits and pieces as you go in the along in the maze and then like as you learn the bits and pieces, it like slowly kind of comes together, and you're like, "Oh, like this is what happened. This is I used to be like a vampire, or like I used to own the mansion, you know, or like I used to know Lydia before everything, right?" And it just kind of all kind of clicks together, and then at the very end or something, like it, it like logic puzzles into one coherent thought, and it's like, "Oh, hey." Now I know that I was so and so head of the Dracula Lie family or something. <laughs> if I can make you, I mean, if, if you're if you're only slash J, I mean, like, it doesn't have to be slash J, Nick. Please play the horror games with me. I will cry if I'm on my own. <laughs> oh, yeah. That that was my that was my nitpick. <laughs> my other nitpick was just um, it would be cool if it was more point and click instead of just choice buttons. But like I know that's just it could be just like a time thing or like a tech thing. I don't know. But like, if you had, like for example, in the door room, like if you could just click on the doors to to advance, that would be pretty neat, man. <laughs> I'll be your backseater for witch house. <laughs> I will gladly allow you to sit in the backseat as I cry. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know. Those are all nitpicks. <laughs> I think like um, the jump scares, I guess, were were done pretty well. Like that one, that one Lydia jump scare that she has. Um, that's pretty. That was pretty scary. 
<laughs> I think like uh, a few of them, like the skull, I think, was also pretty scary, but it kind of faded in, so it didn't really s jump scare you. Oh, I go. I guess it wasn't really. Maybe it wasn't that. Wasn't really the intention. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but yeah, that and like for some reason I shouted at the the woman in the heart door. <laughs> <laughs> Women scary. <laughs> yeah. And also, um, like Lydia suddenly appearing and being like, oh my gosh, it's taking too long. That that whole process section, I guess. Um, and and her cutting in and being like, oh my god, like, I'm getting closer or whatever. That that was also pretty scary. That was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. My brain is empty. Anything else? <laughs> uh. Hmm. 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 Oh, I liked the like the accessibility. Like, if you die on one of the deaths, you can just go back to your previous choice. That makes it easier for for people who don't anxiously save at every choice like I do. <laughs> there are still a couple mysteries that I I haven't really solved. Like I'm not a hundred percent sure what that like dagger at the beginning leads to. Um, since I was an idiot and I didn't open the suitcase during the first playthrough and I was just like, eh, toss it aside, whatever. And I was like, oh, right, uh, right, there was that. <laughs> Only learning that it was actually helpful literally, like, t multiple endings later. <laughs> but, like, the, the dagger they, that you pick up from the suitcase was kind of described as uh, something like, ceremonial. They did kind of hint at, I guess, ceremony, but I'm not sure if it had to do with like, like the turning vampires into mortals situation or not. I don't know. I don't know. But like, I think like, um. Especially for like a month-long game jam, the amount of different routes and rooms that you guys were managed to fit in the maze was very, very cool. <laughs> and like, even though I still don't understand why the bottle being green, why the green bottle is the correct one, <laughs> um, a lot of the rooms are very unique and very. Uh, Oh, how to describe this without sounding cringy. <laughs> uh, they were very cool to go through. And like, just when I thought I had seen all of them, I felt like more kept showing up. But yeah. Cool! Very cool game. Very cool... stuff. <laughs> great description, she Thanks. I know, I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't have anything else. I don't think. Um. I think that's it. <laughs> like double checking over us. Um, <laughs> thank you, Nick. I am unfortunately not the target audience for Lydia. I'm I'm unfortunately not into goth girls like that <laughs> or vampires. <laughs> but I hope the people who are into Lydia have a wonderful day <laughs> or night, I guess. Alright, thanks for coming by, thanks for sticking around and watching. 
Good night and goodbye. <laughs> I just realized I was blocking her the whole time. Wow, I could have been here. Right next to Lydia. Damn it. Oh well. Goodbye. Good night. Alright, oh, yeah, and I added the new emotes. I'm glad you found them. Okay, bye. <laughs>